Hey, welcome back, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to be out in the field testing the Nikon budget lenses again, the 28mm f2.8 and the 40mm f2. Uh, we're going to see if they can hold up the Nikon Z8's high megapixel count and taxing ability to see a lens fault. A lens's faults. <laughs> Too many words to say. Uh, let's go watch the video and we'll discuss all of this when we get back. I know we've tested these lenses before, but that was only on the ZF, so it's it's going to be really interesting to try them on the Z8. Anyway, I'm too much information. We'll talk about it when we get back. Hey, welcome back, everyone. So uh, today, I've just on a whim decided to come out to a place called Birch Point State Park. I've never been here. Some friends told me it was a really amazing location that I needed to come visit. So I uh, am just going to shoot the Z8. I'm going to shoot with the 28 millimeter and the 40 millimeter primes, um, you know, the budget primes. And uh, I did bring the 24 to 120, I'm not going to lie, just in case so I need the extra reach. <clears throat> but this trip is more primarily about using just primes. So 28 and 40 millimeter. Um, yeah, so I'm going to head on in here and we'll see what we can find. I uh, have high hopes. Light's not great, but at least it's sort of cloudy and overcast. And um, I don't have to deal with any really heavy duty sun. So if I find any good forest scenes, that, that'll be really nice. And man, I'm so excited. I just love getting out to shoot. So come on, let's go do it. Wow, this is quite a place. Really beautiful. Especially in this sort of overcast, sort of hazy light. It's just really fantastic. Man. <laughs> we've got Bog over here. And we've got sort of woodland over here. And then behind you is ocean. Wow. What an amazing, beautiful place. So right off the bat, I see I, I want to shoot this. This is, this is beautiful. And especially in this sort of overcast fog. Like there's fog on the horizon, it's hazy here. This should make a pretty nice image with the beach being the leading line that goes out to the point. Yeah, let me set up and we'll get this one. It should be good. I think this is gonna... 40 millimeter, F2. All right, I switched back to the 28. The 40 was definitely not wide enough. So the 28 is the one I'm gonna shoot with now. The sun is trying to come out, but we don't want that. But if it does, I mean, it'll give some directionality, but I don't wanna lose the fog. And if I got the shot, there it is. So I did just order an adapter to make my Canon filters work on these lenses. 52 millimeter to 77 millimeter adapter. That takes care of hooking these 77 millimeters to these small lenses. Screw on the adapter. For this, what I'm really gonna want is a six stop to begin with, just to give it a shot and see if six stops handles it. I love these magnetic filters. They are really just fantastic. I'm doing a review of these eventually. I keep saying that, but it's coming. No, I think 10 stops gonna be what I need to use. See, six stop on the front. So that's my six stop. And on the back, it's my 10 stop. All right, so the effect of the 10 stop ND isn't much from back here. We're gonna go down to the water. And that's where I'll go ahead and shoot this. Uh, let's take a walk down there. And that, that way we can get a nice leading line out of the water as well. All right, so I've come down here to uh, 
to get set up and try to really concentrate on this ocean being the leading line. And by using a 10 stop ND at 25 seconds exposure, it will smooth all of that out and hopefully give me a nice smoky edge to the water that will be the leading line to the point out here. So let me get it set up and give it a shot. If it came out, here's the shot. This is a stunningly beautiful place. I don't know how I've, how I've missed coming here. It's really just unreal. We're gonna go do some woodland photography here in a second. What I wanna do, oh, well, hello, hello. What I wanna do first is long exposure photography right here, so. All right, so the exposure I got, it's really super basic composition. Trees land out into the ocean and of course we're gonna smoke that water out, so. I think I got the shot, I think I like the shot. It's gonna be super basic, as Thomas Heaton calls it, minimalistic, almost monochromatic, it'll be nice. And uh, if that shot came out, which I know it did, here's the shot. All right, so after readjusting a number of times, I think I found a composition I like. I've got this big rock, a smaller rock you probably can't see framing on that side, big rock framing in the top left. This rock that's sticking up higher here in the foreground is the foreground rock, and then that line of tree roots going around uh, down the back, and I think it's, yeah, I like it. I think we're, I think we're in a good spot here. I'll shoot it at a higher, f-stop to try to get it all sharp so I don't have to focus stack but I'll also shoot a couple exposures at a uh, wider aperture and focus stack those and see which comes out better all right two second timer f16 1 20th of a second ISO 64 Gonna move on and see what else there is to find. The fog's gone, so now I'm gonna be messing around with pretty terrible light for what I'm doing. So uh, we may start to move into the woods here because I think that's gonna be the place to, to really get this. Anyway, I found this, this group of rocks here that I really like and then the human laid rocks are kind of an interesting juxtaposition to the, to the, um, to the nature placed boulders, um, glacially placed boulders, whatever. And so uh, I'm going to make this composition, make the photo, and then go stomp down some rock stacks. <laughs>
wow, this is this is really beautiful. I do love a good treescape. All right, so it's really this easy. Um, two trees, big trees in the middle with their roots coming down the rocks, surrounded by all the other trees up top, and then this rock face at the bottom. I really like this shot. These trees are absolutely stunning. I love the way spruce trees will grow like this as the as the um, soil gets washed away, the erosion happens, the trees continue to grow and they'll grow back in and start concentrating on holding themselves into the soil behind it. I have some over on my own property. Nothing like this though, this is amazing. I'm actually gonna bracket this too because it's a, it's a really wide dynamic range on this shot. Three frames, one stop over, one stop under. F11 120th, ISO 64, and there's the shot. I came upon this wonderful little vignette of this spruce tree here and this big square boulder. And then of course these boulders in the background. I'm gonna shoot a vertical and uh, yeah, 28 millimeter. And I think, yeah, okay. So these roots on the ground, they actually lead up, give you a leading line to the tree. And the tree comes up and these branches coming off the tree draw your eye down and give you this garden of rocks over here. It's really just beautiful. I won't need to bracket, so let's turn that off. All right. Uh, I'm gonna shoot it at F14, which is gonna cause a problem. 1 15th of a second, F14, ISO 64. If the wind doesn't stop, I'm gonna to need to up my ISO a little. I'm not afraid of doing that with this camera at all. I wasn't afraid of doing it with the Z7 either. They're both very good at a high ISOs. But I'm gonna wait a second for this to stop swaying around and I don't think the wind's gonna stop this. So I'm gonna up my ISO a little bit. All right, I went up to 200, which gives us a 60th of a second, which should stop that without too much issue. So as I was uh, heading over here, I saw what looked like vandalism. Vandalism, no less, no doubt, vandalism. And I got over here and I realized somebody basically vandalized his own property to, keep, to try to keep other people off of it. Private property. Humans are strange. picture where it's worth far more words than private property, isn't it? All right, so I think that's the end of it for today. We're going to come back to this location. Don't you worry. Uh, the two lenses have proven to be absolutely fantastic. The 28 and the 40. I uh, really, really like them. I'm pretty much done for today. i got to get home and edit this week's video, which you'll see, uh, I don't know, last week. <laughs> you don't even know yet until the end of this week's video that I bought that camera. Because I said I was going to buy a Z7 III. Uh, this camera was that good that I decided it was the perfect replacement for my Z7. 
beautiful day. Thanks for coming out with me, guys. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And above all else, please subscribe if you have not. Set that notification bell. And uh, I hope to see you again next time. Thanks for coming out again, guys. Bye-bye. That place was simply amazing. The weather gave me some really nice moody light and the fog was rolling in and out in just fantastic ways. I really enjoyed shooting there and I'll definitely make it back out there. So I'm gonna keep this brief today and let me start by saying that I was definitely not let down by these lenses. I wasn't sure they'd do that well on the higher megapixel sensor and I never did really try them on the Z7, but they did fantastically. That said, I've had a few people state to me that these lenses aren't sharp and aren't good quality. And in my experience, that couldn't be further from the truth. They're at least as sharp as my 24 to 120 and the 24 to 70 f4. They have good color rendition and excellent accutance. Not only this, but they're small and light and best of all, they're really cheap and I love cheap. No, they aren't ultra durable and they aren't weather sealed on the level that the S primes are. I've shot with them in the rain with, without any problems, by the way but your mileage may vary and don't hold me accountable for anything stupid you do. If you take them out in the rain, that's your problem. Truth is, these lenses are excellent. No, they're not the 50 millimeter S 1.8, but they also don't cost $600 a piece. Nor are they a 30 year old context lens that's a pain in the behind to use and is only good in certain situations. And that lens isn't even waterproof either. I mention in these lenses because every time I get into a discussion with someone about these budget primes, they bring lenses like these into the mix, which is like comparing apples to oranges, except in the final product. Then it's like comparing a Macintosh apple to a pink lady apple. Both are really good, but in different ways. Anyway, I think that my experience with these lenses is that they're really, really good. They're really inexpensive and they're really compact to boot. They should be in everyone's bag. No. They're not ultra high quality in build and they have plastic mounts. These things don't affect how they function as lenses, however. The autofocus is fast and precise. The image quality is excellent to superb with no softness in the corners and they make great photo as well as video lenses. In fact, I'm filming on one right now. The 40 millimeters is what I shoot this studio segment on every week. You simply can't go wrong owning a set of these lenses. Oh, right. I'm on the ZF with the 40, just so you know. Okay, so the end verdict is that they work really well on the Z8. They're nice and compact for when you wanna run light and you can carry both for close to the weight and size of 150 1.8S lens. So, all right, I'm gonna leave that live for now and mention that there's a new budget lens in my setup, ultralight budget lens that really matches the Nikon lens as well. And it's the Viltrox 28 millimeter, oh, I'm sorry, Viltrox 20 millimeter 2.8 Z lens. And of course it's gonna fight me. Come on, stop fighting me. Are we in? Are we in? They're in. <laughs> That's what she looks like. Small, light. Look at that. Oop, wrong light, there we go. Okay, enough of that. I know I'm late to the party on this lens, but I picked it up for 158 bones from B&H and this thing is just ridiculous. I can't believe it's a budget prime. It even has a metal mount for those of you that are hard on things or on the other side, those of you that are snobs about things. I'll do a review soon, but all I can say is this thing is sharp, sharp, sharp and just a fantastic lens. It shares the 52 millimeter filter thread of the Nikon budget primes and it weighs close to the same as well. So that said, this is a new lens in my budget prime ultralight landscape setup. Now I'm waiting for a good ultralight 75 or 85 F2 to finish the set, or even a 65 and then a 90 or a 125. Dreams, dreams, dreams. Anyway, I think I'll call it at that. I wanna thank you guys for coming out and I hope you found this useful. And if you did, please give it the thumbs up and please subscribe. Subscriptions keep the channel alive and the thumbs up keeps the algorithm placing me so that others can see me. Uh, and also set the notification bell so you know when I put one of these out. Um, thanks for coming out again. I appreciate you guys way more than you know and I will see you again next week. Have a great weekend and uh, take care. Bye-bye.